Start. In this video we will look at the six different types of growing possibilities. Easiest way is to use a big plastic box. Then one can upgrade to a Martha tomato grow tent. Last and biggest option is to use an indoor grow tent for plants. I will give you a YouTube video suggestion to every grow option. In the selected videos the creator shows you how to set up that growing possibility. After having seen how this different options are implemented, we will discuss the advantages and disadvantages of each option. If one has not made his mind up by then, we will evaluate the different options with a value benefit analysis. We will evaluate them on the basis for three different user types. Type A is the starter type, B is the maker and C is the venturer. The result was, that the starter type should start with an automated box, a monotube with bought electrical products. The maker should buy a Martha tomato grow tent and add and combine the needed technical components himself. If one wants to build a small business, then the best way is to buy a plant indoor grow tent and start big with plug and play equipment. At the end of this video, I will provide a material list, in which I will show the essential products and their price and a possible sourcing option. I produced this video in a way that it can also be used as a PDF printout. Hey! My name is Daniel, I am from Germany, and I will be your host. This is how I have structured the lecture. First we will look at the options we have. Easiest way to create a fruiting environment is to use a big plastic box. We can drill holes into it for fresh air exchange. We could also add a fan and a humidifier. Next possibility is to use a tomato grow tent. They come in three sizes. Small, tall, and as a walkable tent. Since many people started growing their own plants indoor, mainly cannabis plants, there are by now many cheap big grow tents one can buy. They are reasonable cheap and a great option if one has enough space. Let's check out some videos of the options. First. This video from the creator Boomer Shroomer shows you how to build and use a monotube. This option goes without any electrical components. One uses drilled holes, which can be open or closed, depending on the growing state of the fungi. The advantages are obviously the very cheap price and the simplicity. It is very easy to assemble, and one can create the needed environment with it. The missing electronics result in the daily task of spraying water and checking the humidity levels, and maybe also venting it. I would count this as a plus point, as one needs to connect with the mushroom. On the contra side is that it is very simple tech and the resulting harvest is smaller due to the size of the box. The second option is quite similar. This automated grow box is presented in a YouTube video by the creator North Spore. In the video North Spore will teach you how to build it and to use it properly. He uses an extra fan, humidifier, and humidity controller. All the components are attached with tape. So still simple and easy to duplicate tech. In this video I do show you, how you can create the same with as a do-it-yourself version with basic electronic components. This version is of course much cheaper, but as a trade-off one needs to do a little bit more assembling and connecting to get it running. Results are in both versions the same. The advantages of this build are, that one has a controlled box for a cheap price. That means, one only need to set it up to the correct values and weight. Of course, you should check on a regular basis, because every mushroom is different, and they also have different stages. The negative side of this build is that the grow size is still small, and the components are only taped to the box. Thus, it is not that good looking and cleaning and long lasting is not that good when one uses mainly duct tape for everything. If you want to have more space to fruit more mushrooms, then next step would be to use a tomate grow tent. If this is a possibility for your, then I would suggest, that you watch this video. It is again from the YouTube creator North Spore. He created a complete setup and also sells it as a bundle. The bundle consists of the tent, a fan, and also, a humidifier and a humidity controller. This is a great way to start. This tech offers much more space than just a box. It is easy to assemble, 
and the environment is nicely controlled. Many people already use this tech. On the contra side one can not that the components are still connected in a kind of improvised way and the exhaust air is not separately evacuated. The full Martha is the next logical step. This is a build that I created in order to bridge the simple Martha tech and the big tent tech. There is a YouTube video in which I explain how to set it up and how to build all parts in a do-it-yourself way. The setup includes HEPA filtered in air ventilation and a separate exhaust venting. It utilizes a self-built humidifier and controller. The advantage points of the build is that it offers a big growing space which is fully controlled for a very cheap price. The contra points are that one need to have basic knowledge or at least wants to learn a little bit about electronics. One also need to 3D print some parts in order to have a neat and organized setup without duct tape and cable spaghetti. This is the escalation of the Martha Tech. In this great video the YouTube creator Kinokaholic shows how he designed his big Martha chamber. One can look easily inside thanks to the transparent casing. He added incoming air on the bottom. He did not add extra exhaust extraction. But this could be added easily. A big Martha tent could also be powered by the do-it-yourself version of the smaller Martha. Then one would use two humidifier and place them on each side and the venting system in the middle of the Martha. The pro sides of this build are obvious. The contra side is that one need to put extra work in to raise the Martha and also my need to insulate it from the ground. This is important if one wants to have a proper exhaust system and a dry floor. The floor is often the coldest part of the tent. That means that water condensates there first if the dew point temperature is undershot. That invites mold. You should know about the dew point. Water will condensate if under a certain temperature. If you have 18 degrees Celsius and 90% humidity in your tent, then your flower should be not colder than 16,5 degrees Celsius, otherwise you will have water on the cold surface. I factored that in when I designed my do-it-yourself Martha Tech. But it is of course not a much more difficult task to insulate the floor a big tent. If you have a warm floor, then you will not have that problem, otherwise you should be insulating the floor before setting the tent up. Now, to the big cannon. The creator Southwest Mushrooms has nice YouTube videos in which he works with these big indoor grow tents. You see that they are very spacious and in combination with plastic shelving a very nice way to grow lots of mushrooms. In this video he explains how to clean them. That means you will see the components he uses inside the tent. The box with the yellow lid is the fogger. There are many tutorial on YouTube on how to build one. Please note, that the tent is completely sealed. With a big tent like that you would want to use plug and play components with enough power to completely immerse the whole tent. The price of the components can be a little bit higher, as a tent offers so much space that the ratio between costs and harvest will be in your favor. That means, if you want to have lots of mushrooms to harvest, then there is not way around this solution. Let's look at some hard facts. We will first compare size, volume, and price. One can note, that the full Martha offers a very good price to volume ratio. A big tent is also quite cheap. So, what about the floor, shelving and the airflow? Here, shelving is not needed or is included in the tech. These variants all have an open floor. The next proposed tents have a closed floor. Extra shelves must be only bought for the biggest tent. Why is a closed tent with exhaust ventilation important? Because if you grow many mushrooms in one space you have a high spore load during fruiting. Here you see fans from my Martha when I grew some lion's mane mushrooms. The more mushrooms you have, the more spores you will have in your air. Here you see some old Raishi cultures. I let them sit there because I wanted to show you the spores. You could of course harvest before the main sporing happens. But since my Martha is closed the spores are sucked out together the, the humidity loaded air. New air is pushed in from the top. You always need waterproof fans because of the high humidity. Here I placed some of the spores on a specimen slide together with some of my scalp hair. You can nicely see the single hair strands. A closer look. 
now only two strands are left. The spores are really small. I added an extra Barlow lens. And a second Barlow lens. This is the best I can get. Still not good enough to show you a single spore. Now we will move on to the degree of automation and needed changes. The first three options are mainly the same. One an extra humidifier, fan, and a humidity controller. This option is different, because if you want to have exhaust ventilation you must add more stuff. You can do this variance to do it yourself way or of course also with of the shelf equipment. To get the big tent working, you will need a bigger fan, a bigger fogger and more LED lights. This is a completely different setup. So, now you have all the facts. At the end I will give you also links to all the products. Do you know already which design is to write one for you? Great, skip to the end. Let's look how one would make a rational decision. The main function of the box or tent is to control the environment. All, to have happy fruiting mushrooms. Since not only the mushrooms are all different, but every one of you is also special and unique. Still we have not choice but will have to declare three different mushroom loving persons. The starter type, the maker type and the venturer type. The starter type is just beginning with farming mushrooms. So, what does this type want? Here are the attributes I chose that might be important. Next, we will compare them to each other. Low starting costs are more important than low operation costs. So we put down a 2. The low costs are also more important than the size. We put again down a 2. We do this for the complete row. At the end we add up the numbers. We will compare each attribute to each other attribute and add up the numbers. Low starting costs got 12 points from 56 points. That results in 21%. Second important for the starter the easy assembly and a low maintenance. Now that we have weight the different attributes, we will apply them to the different builds. We will give 4 points for a very good suitability and 0 points for a very bad fit. In an ideal world we would like to achieve 4 point solutions for every attribute we declared whatever we factored it before. Then we would be able to achieve 32 point maximum. Now we put down the points and weigh them afterwards with the defined factor. Low starting cost is very good with solution 1. It is also weighted the highest. We get 0.21 times 4 equals 0.86 weighted points. Big size in comparison is weighted with 14% but get only 1 point for the box solution, because the box is very small but the solution is still bearable. This this attribute will get 0.14 weighted points. The most points got variant 2. This is the best solution for the starter type. It got nearly 80% of the wished solution. Great. I hope you understood how the value benefit analysis works. Let's look at the maker type next. This is how I characterized the maker. You might pause and think about it. It resulted in the highest valuation of the attributes of using DIY products, controlling the complete setup and embracing the technical challenges of creating a negative pressure inside the tent. When we use these weight factors to the already established assessment of the different tech designs, then on gets a clear answer. The big Martha tents get nearly 90% of overall value benefit. This is not that much surprising as they are the only options with deep and do-it-yourself approach. Now the Venturer type. This is how I characterized the Venturer. The highest point got the attributes of size and control possibilities, quite understandable if one want to ensure the highest harvest as possible. We will again apply these weight factor to the already established assessment of the different tech designs. Winner is the big tent. The Marthas are not that far away. But in reality the size of the big tent should have gotten a 6 instead of a 4, then the difference would be obvious. You like the approach? Do it yourself. Here you can put down your own attributes and sort them depending on their importance. Next you use them to calculate your value of each possible solution. So what is the conclusion? After we have compared all the things one can compare, 
look at videos of every build and check the advantages and trade-offs. We got three good starting point for the three mushroom loving types of peoples that are watching this lecture. When you are the starter type, please consider to start your fruiting journey with that video. I wish you a happy and successful start into mushrooming. When you are the maker type, you should check the video series I created specially for you. It was my corona lockdown project and with it I wanted to fill the gap between so very simple monotube tech and the completely different tech one uses for the big indoor tents. This project is very good documented and already successful replicated by other. If you always do things in a big way, then this is the way. Check out Southwest Mushrooms. He has a nice YouTube channel. Many resources out there on how to set it up, and how to create the needed tech. All the best and may your humidifier never run dry. Make your choice and then, happy mushrooming. We will finish with a look at the needed materials. Housing first. This is a simple big box. The lid you will need. A 4 shelled Martha. A 5 shelled Martha. This is a walkable Martha. This is a cheap big grow tent. You can buy much bigger ones. There are some options to choose from. Now the tech stuff. You can buy a setup kit for variant 1 the monotube from North Spore. North Spore also offers a kit for the small Martha. This is a humidity controller that is used by many grower. One can also use a CO2 controller. I do not use them. I just look at my mushrooms and adjust the airflow until they are happy. This I just one of the possible humidifier that I picked. There are many more one could use. Just do your research. If you want to build a humidifier for your big tent, then you need to use one of these mist makers. Here you find a tutorial on who to set up a big humidifier. This is a fan on can use. With different voltage you can have a different volume flow rate. This is a big fan. Used by North Spore for a small Martha, but a big fan like that I would use for a big tent. The cheapest way to automate a monotube is of course do it yourself. And the cheapest way for automating a Martha is again the do it yourself approach. Now it is time to come to an end. I hope you learned something new. Please share your acquired knowledge with your mushroom loving community. How did you come up with your setup? What would you like to have known before you started? My next video will be about creating a cheap do-it-yourself incubator. This little 12 volt heating device will warm up your incubator box and thus speed up the growing process in your petri dishes or in your grain jars. Thank you, for spending your time with me. Auf Wiedersehen.